Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of y'all out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you're running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, Claiming Your Territory. The text is taken from Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 states, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. The book of Joshua occupies a pivotal place in the Old Testament's opening narrative. It tells of the fulfillment of the promise of land for Israel made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Thus, it stands at the end of the first five books of the Old Testament, which takes the reader from the creation of the world to the election of Israel. Its foundation as the covenant people of God, a vision for his social and religious life through law, and the death of Moses to the point at which the people is equipped and ready to enter the land. Deuteronomy must be followed by something like Joshua if the history of Israel with God is to continue. Joshua is therefore not just a fulfillment, but also the presupposition of the account of the life of Israel that follows. If Israel had not entered the land, the famous stories of Gideon and Samson and Saul and David and Solomon and the prophets and the kings of Israel and Judah could never have been told. As Israel under Joshua crosses the great divide of the river Jordan, so the book itself is a threshold. Marking the passage from a people without land to a people with land. The building blocks are henceforth in place and the stage set for the great drama that will show how Israel will fare as God's covenant people and ultimately has his light to the nations. So as we look at the book of Joshua, we see this is a new stage of the story of Israel because here it opens with the recalling of the death of Moses, which was spoken of in the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Judges begins in a similar way where it talks about the death of Joshua. And Joshua is commissioned by God to lead the people into the promised land. We read here in verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Joshua had no time to prepare because God has been preparing him throughout the years when he was in obedience to Moses. And at the right time, God spoke to Joshua, arise and go over. I want to speak this word prophetically to you. God is declaring to you this morning, it's time for you to rise and go over. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to start doing. It's time for you to go forth. Rise up and declare war against the enemy. It's time for you to claim back what is yours. Take back what is yours. Whatever the locust has eaten, it's time for you to pray, to fast, and claim back whatever is lost. The enemies are squatters in your territory. Never forget that. They are not legal occupants. You have the right to cast them out in the mighty name of Jesus. So you need to rise up today like Joshua, a warrior, a heart pounding, a warrior's heart, and declare war and take back. What is yours? Take back your business that the enemy has stolen. Take back the finances that the enemy has stolen from you. Take back your health. Take back your peace and sanity. Take back your relationship, husband and wife, families. Take back that relationship. Take back your children that the devil has 
taken a grip on them and put all kinds of addictions and habits and kept them in prison. Take it back today. Take back the people that the enemy is leading to hell. Take back the people that are blinded with the lies and deception of the enemy. Take back the people that are caught up with depression. Take back the people that are in bondage and captivity. It's time for you and I to rise up and be like Joshua and go over and take back what is rightfully yours. So today in my sermon, I will present to you five important points that we can learn from this passage. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 right up to verse 9 on how you can claim back your territory. How you can take back what is yours. How you can live in victory. How you can live in the abundance. The first point is arise and go over. It's taken from verse 2. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. From this verse, we see God addresses or speaks to Joshua directly. The crossing of Jordan, which Joshua is to lead, symbolizes the possession of the land, a full circle from the exodus from Egypt, which has also involved a crossing of the Red Sea in Exodus 14 and 15. His special assignment here is to lead the people of Israel into that land that God has promised to give them. As far back as the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. As we see in Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, God instructs Joshua to arise and go over. And here in this instruction, there is great lessons we can learn in how you and I can be a great leader. No one, remember this, no one wakes up in the morning and says, today I am a leader. Leadership is earned, built and cultivated in small steps with small things done successfully every day. You and I must remember that because many times people immediately wants to be a leader, immediately wants to be a manager in the corporate world, immediately wants to be a general manager, immediately wants to be a CEO. But many refrain from learning and growing so that eventually they'll reach that position. Emily Dickerson once said, if you take care of the small things, the big things take care of themselves. I hope you remember this. If you take care of the small things, the big things take care of themselves. And I believe Joshua was such a character. He took care of the small things. Everything that Moses asked him to do, he did it well. He did it to his best. He never complained. He never murmured. He never tried to take over Moses' position. He did all the small things to the best end. The big thing took care of itself at the right time. God spoke to Joshua. Joshua, arise and go over. Often hardship gives us the most valuable lessons of life. We got to keep growing instead of standing still. So hardship is important. Difficulties is important in our life. Trials is important. Tribulation is important. Going through the valleys of life, facing the fire is important because in these times of hardship, in these times of difficulty, you and I tend to grow. You and I got to get up and learn new things. You and I got to get up in times of these difficulties and give up certain things that we ought to give up and learn new things so that we grow and we become a better person. 
Nietzsche said this, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. This statement is not always true. It's not true for everybody. In fact, you got to embrace the problems you are facing. You can't allow the situation to crush you. You got to learn to overcome it and be stronger. When circumstances come, when situations come, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you got to rise up and face it and defeat it. Then you come out a better person, knowing who you are in Jesus Christ, knowing your God, the almighty God, the miracle working God, because you always have a new revelation of God when you face the enemy, when you face difficulties, because God always comes true. So to face these difficulties, to face these situations, we got to prepare ourselves. That's why it's so important for you and I to grow, to read the Bible daily, to pray daily, to attend church regularly, to go to Bible study regularly, to attend prayer meeting regularly, to sit under the feet of certain leaders so that they can impart or input into you so that you can grow. It's so important for you and I to grow step by step, step by step, to be obedient, to be submissive, to learn from different peoples in our life. So at the right time, we're able to take on that responsibility, that work of the devil, that onslaught of the enemy, the difficulties will be ready like how Joshua was ready. If Joshua was not ready and God instructed him to do it, he would have crumbled under the pressure of being a leader of such a great multitude. And also he would have crumbled by stepping into the shoe of such a great leader like Moses. The reason why he could go in because he was faithful, he was submissive, he was loyal, he learned, he heard, he grew in faith. So at the right time, he was able to do what God called him to do. Aristotle said this, he said that virtue is a habit. For Aristotle, habits primarily determine our character. His famous quote is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Moral virtues become the qualities of a person through active exercise of it. Excellence we get by exercising them. As also happens in many other situations, you become a great builder by building things. You become a great musician, a guitar player, or a keyboard player, piano player, by keep playing and playing. You become just by doing just X. You become temperate by doing temperate X. You become brave by doing brave X. John Locke, an English philosopher said this, children should not be taught by memorizing rules for conduct, but by habit. When they are taught, they tend to forget. That's why they need to practice. Practice over and over begets habits in them which being once established operates of themselves easily and naturally without the assistance of the memory. You can't expect to do the right thing when the big thing happens unless you are in the habit of doing the right thing when the little things happen. Remember that we got to keep doing the right things whenever the little things happen. So when the big thing comes, you and I will surely do the right thing. That's why the emphasis is keep doing. Every day you got to keep, every day read the Bible, every day pray, every day read books, every day read magazines to improve yourself in your area of profession. You got to keep doing. You want to be honest, you got to live a life of honesty. You cannot allow lies to take the better of you. You got to live a life of sincerity. You got to live a life of honesty. You got to be hard working. So you look at Joshua. Joshua was faithful to his task. 
He was responsible. He didn't murmur. He didn't complain. He didn't jump the gun. He faithfully submitted to Moses. And at the right time, God said, Moses, my servant is dead. Arise and go over. And that was when Joshua was chosen to be the leader of this great nation. That was his Kairos time. And today I believe God is speaking to you and I that this is our Kairos time. This is the time that you and I need to arise and go over. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book entitled Outliers where he did a research on people who are exceptionally good in their areas of work or music. And he found out that throughout all these characters that something was common, that all of them spent at least 10,000 hours in doing that work before they can hit that level that's beyond everybody else. That is the 10,000 hour rule. It's a rule that teaches us the importance on doing our work over and over, faithfully improving, getting better daily, improving ourselves so that God can use us mightily, so that we can impact this world. We can touch lives. We can do great things for Jesus Christ. David was an expert with the sling and the stone. And this can only come by practice. He was bold to face Goliath. This also comes by practice. While he was taking care of the sheep, the lion came, the bear came. He went and defeated them. He built that boldness because of practice. He had faith in God to defeat Goliath. And this also comes with practice. In his daily life, he exercised that faith. That's how he could take care of the sheep and defeat the bear and lion. That's how he was bold enough to tell everyone that he will defeat Goliath because he kept doing it. So you and I today need to be faithful in the little things. When you do well in the little things, you will do well in the great things. You will never be able to do great things unless you are faithful in doing the little things. Then you will hear like how Joshua heard the words from God, arise and go over. Arise and start that business. Arise and take back what is yours. Arise and go to the nations and preach the word. Arise and lay hands on the sick and the possessed and all kinds of difficulties and you're going to see miracles. Arise for you are going to experience a turnaround. Arise for you are going to be a great overcomer. Amen. So I want to encourage you in the first point that we talk about arise and go over. We need to learn to be faithful in the little things. Excel in the little things. Excel in the daily little chores that you have. Learn from situation so that the right time you will be prepared. The second point is God's promises will always come through. Verses 3 and 4. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your course. The second point is important because here we see God's promise to Joshua. God commissioned Joshua, we see in the end of the book of Deuteronomy, and we see also in the starting of the book of Joshua chapter 1, God commissioned him to arise and go over. Then in verse 2, we see God's promise that every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, and the whole area where God specified very clearly that God will give him. And that is the promise. And that's how we need to live today. We need to live 
trusting on the promises of God. We need to live relying on the word from the Lord, whether it's the prophetic word, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the rhema word, revelation, the promises in the Bible that is rightfully ours. We need to hold on to it because why? God's promises never fail. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says, For the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be the God for out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God says something, you can trust him that he will surely see through. You just read the Bible, go to the Bible, see all the prophecies that was spoken by great men of God, the prophets of old, and see all the promises came through. Whatever God said, it came through. God spoke to Sarah, she'll have a child, and the old age, she had a child. God said God will take them to the promised land. God took them to the promised land. God's word will always come through. So this is so important for us as we go to claim back what is ours, as we go into this new area, as we walk over and how Joshua led the people from the wilderness and stepped into the promised land. As you and I today, we are going to go over into the land where God has for you, into the area where God has for you. You have been struggling for so long. Now you're going to step over the threshold and go and walk into victory and abundance and healing and prosperity and peace is for you to know the word of God, the promises of God, the yes and amen. We got to hold on to the word of God. There are so many promises in the Bible for you and I to take and meditate on and claim. If you are sick, in Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Jeremiah 33 verse 6, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Matthew 8, 16, 17 says, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. We look in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, says the similar thing. Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace were upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. John 16.33 says, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Philippians 4.6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind to Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. For finances, the promises for finances, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. God has given the power, the ability to get wealth. God is able to empower us to prosper. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, he make us rich, and had no sorrow with it. Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Philippians 4, 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says, There is that scattered and yet increase it. There is that withhold it more than his meat, but it tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth it shall be watered also himself. Luke 6, 38 says, Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with her, it shall be measured to you again. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. For power, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God has not given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthened me. Luke 10 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And another promise the Bible gives us that no wicked plan can prosper against the believers. Isaiah 54, verse 7, No weapon that formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall thou condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. The Bible says, Summit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. James 4, 7 and 8. The third point is, God is always with you. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua's role was always to have a military aspect. We look at Numbers 13, 16. We look at Numbers 14, 6. Deuteronomy 31, verse 3, 7 to 8. It is in this connection that God promises to be with Joshua. A promise that God has made once before. If we read Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 23, the last part. And which reminds us of God's assurance to Moses himself. Exodus 3, 12. The continuation of I will never leave you nor forsake you. Was first spoken to Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 31. 31 verse 6. But now to Joshua and later as we read in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So this is a promise God gave to the children of Israel. This is a promise that God gave through Moses, through Joshua and even to us as believers that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God gave assurance to Joshua as a military leader that God will be with him, that he will have victory. And God gave assurance to us as his children that God will never leave us nor forsake us. So I want you today to remember this promise Throughout your days, remember this promise because you will definitely come to a place, definitely go through a period of time where you feel you are lost. You feel there's nobody there to support you. Your family members are not there. Your friends are not there. You are in darkness and the devil will try to speak all kinds of lies to you and tell you that you are all alone. There's nobody there who, who can support you. You are left all alone. Nobody else is going through the situation you're going through. You've got no one to turn to. Nobody will help you. Your case is impossible. You are a goner. You're finished because he's come to steal, kill and destroy. He wants to deceive you. He wants to put lies in you. And you need to remember this promise that God is always with you. 
God will never leave you nor forsake you. God, when Jesus Christ died, when he left, he told the disciples to wait to tarry in Jerusalem until they endured with power from an high. He told them about the Holy Spirit will come and dwell within them and be the comforter. God doesn't leave us all alone. God is always with us. Whether you are in the valley, whether you're top of the mountain, God is with you. People are excited when they're on top of the mountain, they give praise to God. When they get a promotion, they give praise to God. When the children scores all A's and does very well in their studies or universities, they give praise to God. But when they face difficulties, when problems come, trials come, sicknesses come, that hit the family, some of them turn around and get angry with God. They do not know how to remember no matter what situation it is, I still remember God is with me. God will never leave me nor forsake me. Whether I am in that furnace of fire, God is with me. Whether I'm thrown in the pit of lions, God is with me. Whether everyone is against me, God is still with me. We must remember that because this is a great promise. Many people end up with anxiety, with worry, and even into deep depression because of the lies the enemy puts in their mind and tell them they're all alone. Nobody is going through your situation. you got nobody to turn to. Your situation is an impossible case. There's no hope. You are dug a deep hole and you're in there and nobody can help you. And we slowly and surely believe in their lies. And because of that, we end up depressed. So today, I want you to realize that God is with you. God loves you. And God will always lead his people, the men and women that God called into ministry, to come to your rescue. To come and encourage you. To come and lift you up. To come and counsel you. And come and walk with you. So that you will be an overcomer. So never forget this. God is with you. Don't allow the enemy to attack you because this is the modus operandi of the devil is to isolate us, is to make us feel we are all alone, is to make us feel that nobody is going through the situation, is make us feel that nobody can help you, is make you feel that it's impossible. He's an expert of exaggerating things and leaving out certain important information. That's why it's so important for you to remember God is with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will always come through to your life. The Bible says in Romans 8, 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God is with us, who can be against us? Remember that if God is with us, or you can replace the if with another word, since God is with us, who can be against us? In Isaiah 43 verse 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So remember, when God calls you to do something, when God leads you into an area, whether the storms come, the waves come, difficulties come, Remember that God is with you. And with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Point number four is be strong and very courageous. In Joshua chapter one, we see in verse six, seven, nine, and even in 18, it says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Because for you and I, to take back what is ours, for you and I to claim your territory, for you and I to claim victory, restoration, recovery, it's important for us to have faith. It's important for us to be strong and courageous. It's important for us to address the, the enemy that's trying to creep into our life and paralyze us, which is Fear, which is worry. We need to deal with it. So you must be strong and courageous. That's why you see from verse 6 to 9, this is a short paragraph we read here that records Joshua's 
commissioning for the task. It is not a first charge to Joshua, but a reaffirmation. Because when you read in Joshua, it's actually a reaffirmation what was spoken in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 7, 14, 15, 23. For God had already commissioned him while Moses was alive in Deuteronomy chapter 31. So verse 6 actually repeats exactly or virtually Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 7. 31 verse 7 says that Moses called to Joshua and said unto him the sight of all Israel, be strong and courageous for you shall go with these people into a land which the Lord has sworn unto your fathers to give them and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. Then we see in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, be strong and courageous for you shall give these people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So we see in verse 6, Moses spoke to Joshua. And here again we see spoken to Joshua to be strong and courageous. Why? Because this is a promise that God has given to the people. And when God gives his promise, his word will surely come through. So you can hold on to all the promises in the Bible that is rightfully yours as a child of God and you can pray it and claim it for it will come to just as how God gave this promise to the nation of Israel through Moses, to Abraham, through Moses and now to Joshua to lead them to walk into the promised land. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 23, he says, Then he commissioned Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. This is the promise that God promised. And God again says, I will be with you. So you don't need to be doubtful. You don't need to be fearful. You need to have faith. You need to be strong and courageous. Why? Because this is what God promised. If God promised, the enemy cannot take it from me. It's God's word. It's God's word. God's word never fails. The promises of God, they are yes and amen. So the charge to be strong and courageous is suitable for the ministry's task ahead. Because why? For him to fulfill this task, he needed, it's a huge task. It's a difficult task. So he needed to be strong and courage. He needed to be full of faith. He cannot be a doubter. He cannot be fearful. Then he will fail miserably. But the word here says that he needs to inherit the land. Be strong and courageous. Verse 6 says, For you shall give his people possession of the land which I swore to the Father. Deuteronomy 31 verse 7 says, be strong and courageous for you shall go with these people in the land which the Lord has sworn to the fathers to give them and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. So here is a commission to Joshua to be strong and courageous. It doesn't just speak of victory but rather of legitimate occupation. The idea of inheritance is a way of expressing Israel's God-given right to the land that is often spoken in the book of Deuteronomy. Israel's God-given right to the land. And God has given us many promises in the Bible and it's our God-given right for us to live in it and claim it and enjoy it because Jesus died and paid the price so that you and I can live in victory. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, For I have commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is similar to what was said to Israel through Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 121. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. Joshua 1.18 says, Anyone rebels against your command and does not obey your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Joshua 10.35, Joshua said, Do not fear or be dismayed. Be strong and courageous. For thus the Lord will do 
to all your enemies with whom you fight. Isaiah 42 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. And there are many other verses in the Bible that God reminds the children of God to be bold, to be courageous, and not to fear. So it's important here where we learn at this point where it says for us to be strong and courageous. Be not dismayed. Be not fearful. What is God telling us that we need to be a people of faith? We need to be a people who walk by faith and not by sight. We need to be a people like John eleven forty says that if only you believe, you will see the glory of God. We need to be a people of faith like what we read by faith Noah being warned of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness which is by faith. Hebrew 11 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them we diligently seek him. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5, 25 to 34 showed great faith. The centurion who went, or the Roman soldier who went to see Jesus for the healing of his servant showed great faith in Matthew 8. And we see in Romans 4, 18 to 21, we talk about Abraham, a man of great faith who against hope, believe in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the dangers of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform this is so important for us to claim back the land, to claim back the inheritance, to take back what the enemy has stolen, to take back what the locust has eaten, to experience a turnaround, to see healing upon your body of all these sicknesses. Nowadays, we got COVID-19, we got cancer and all kinds of sickness. You must have faith. Faith, Jesus heal us. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Our God is a God that healeth us. We must believe. Don't allow doubt and worry and all kinds of things to come in. Hold on to the word of God. Point number five, reading, meditating, and obeying the word of God. From Joshua chapter one, verse seven and eight. Verse seven says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of their mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shall have good success. So verse 7 and 8, it emphasizes on the importance of reading the word, meditating on the word, obeying the word. Because for Joshua and the people of Israel to have victory is not only by using all kinds of warfare methods, all kinds of courage, but they ought also to obey the word. Similarly for us today, for us to enjoy a continuous life of victory, a continuous life of close relationship with God, a continuous life of joy and peace, we must live in obedience to God. Many times when we are in difficulty, then we fast, we pray, we give up bad habits, we go to God. And when things turn good, we slowly let go and do things that are not right. And then we hit the wall and we cry and wonder why these difficulties are happening. We need to search our hearts. We need to be honest. Not always 
difficulties come because of sin. Sometimes uh, things happen in our life. It just happens. We grow with it. We trust God. Like how Daniel was alive as dead. The three Hebrew children was the furnace of fire. But other times because our own sin, because of rebellion, because of walking out of the part of God. So for those times, we need to apply 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God will hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. So it's important here for us to read, to meditate, to obey. This is the instruction given to Joshua for him to have victory in the promised land is to be strong and courageous. As I told you earlier on a point we need to have, we need to have faith, we need to be strong and courageous. Then he goes on to say in verse 7, be careful to do according to all the law which Moses thy servant commanded thee. Do not turn to the right or left. Do not turn to, it means that don't give room for the enemy. Don't give in. Don't give the enemy even a small little finger. Don't think, oh, this is a small life, and that is a small life. This is a small sin, and that was a small sin. And eventually you end up doing a big sin. That's why many people fall in sin. Because they lie here, they lie there, they cheat here, they cheat there, and end up they're cheating so many things on the husband or wife, and they are not living a life of honesty. And it's difficult to have a marriage when you live a lies. It's difficult to have blessings from God when you're living on lies, when you're living in sin, when you're living in rebellion. So it's so important here today for you and I to read the word, meditate on the word. Don't just have hate knowledge. We got enough people with hate knowledge, permanent hate damage. We need people to meditate on the word. We need people to read the word. We need people to Meditate on the word. That means you start to think on the word. You start to speak the word. You start to live in according to the word. The entire day, the word is filling your life. For us to defeat the enemy, defeat the demonic spirit, for us to have spiritual victory in spiritual, for us to have, <laughs> for us to defeat the enemy, to come against every demonic force, to have victory in spiritual warfare, it's so important to have the word in us. We need to bind ourselves to the word of God. So when you rebuke the enemy, you're using the word and rebuking the enemy. When the enemy tries to put lies and deception, you have the word that is saturated in your mind and you can reject the lies of the enemy because you know they are lies. You know who you are in Jesus Christ. That is so important for you. To meditate on the word. Meditation is getting the word of God in your mind, in your heart. Meditation, I have spoken on meditating on the word in so many of my sermons. If you go and listen to my sermons, you will have a detailed lessons on meditating on the word of God. It's not only memorizing. When the Bible mentions meditating in Joshua and Psalm, it usually uses the word night and day with it. Meditation is not a devotional time at a certain point of day. It is the word being taught about, spoken, prayed, witnessed. It is the word permeating our life. Getting the word into our head is a learning process. By having the word in our heart is a love process. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20, 24 says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them upon thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. So the first thing, it shall guide thee or lead thee. The second point is, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. It guards you when you sleep. And then he says, it shall keep thee when thou awakest. It's a companion to us. It shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamb and the law is a light and reproofs of instruction are the ways of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Luke 4, 4 says, Jesus answered, saying, No, the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 4 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments we have commanded this day, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all this blessing shall come on thee, and overtake thee, 
if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Romans chapter 10 verse 19. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So for us to be strong and courageous, for us to grow in faith, for us to deal with the fear and the doubt is for us to get the living word in us, the Rema word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. John 6, 63 says, the word of God is alive and powerful. It's alive and powerful so that we become alive. We become powerful. Hebrews 4, 12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, the weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty to God, to pulling down the strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalted himself against the knowledge of God, and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So it's so important for us to read the word, meditate on the word, obey the word. It's so important to read and allow the word to permeate our entire body, the way we think, our worldview. Our, we need to have a paradigm shift now. We're not going to think according to the world, according to what you read in the newspapers or hear in the news or listen to all the WhatsApp or the gossiping around there. But you need to get the word in you, the word in you, the word in you. So then you start to base your thinking and your living based on the living word. So your beliefs within you become in line with the Bible, not in line with the lies and rumors and fears out there. And if you have that, then you'll be terrified and paralyzed and expecting to die and expecting to be bankrupt and expecting to be a failure. But if you get the word in you and all the promises in you, you get the right beliefs according to the word of God. And that will be strength to you. That will be pillars that will hold you up. That's why you need to permeate. You need to meditate on the word daily. Read and read and read. Get the heart of God. Get the attributes of God soaked in you. So when the devil tries to put lies, you can reject it because many times the devil will use all kinds of lies. There's one type of lies, generalization, it happened to that person, he'll give you the thought that because it happened to that, it happened to you. No, no, that's the lies of the devil. Even though that might be a Christian, that by a leader, but that's a different person. You are a different person. You are going to hold on to the promises of God. You're not going to generalize things. Oh, that person lost his, that person lost his job. I might lose my job. Oh, that person's marriage broke up. Oh, my marriage might break up. Oh, that person's children involved in, in drugs and alcohol and all kinds of habits. Oh, maybe my no, no, you God going to accept it. You are going to claim your children's life unto the Lord. You're going to bring victory. You're going to speak blessings. It's important for you not to allow that generalization to come upon you. And the next thing is so important for you to remember the promises of God in the times of difficulty. Many times we forget the promises of God. We in fact forget who God is when we're facing a difficult problem when we are facing a job loss or financial constraint or sickness or problems with our marriage, with our children or problems at work. Sometimes we totally forget the power and authority God has. We forget his El Shaddai, is a miracle working. All those words we learned about suddenly gets deleted from our mind. Only the fearful things come, the negative things can stay. So we need to keep reminding ourselves who God is, who God is, oh, what God can do, the promises of God. So Whatever comes, we are going to be strong because our faith is in God. And the next thing we must be very careful to guard our mind. As I read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, it tells you to guard your mind. Allow only the thoughts that are obedient to God stay in your mind. So first and foremost, we need to have a healing in our soul because the Bible says in 3 John verse 2, I pray that you'll prosper and good health, even if your soul prospers, your mind, instead of focusing on thousand and one things, you need to focus on what God has called you to do, single-minded on a purpose and do it. Your mind is to be focused, your will needs to do the will of God, what God has 
best for you and you're going to do it with all your mind and your emotions. You need to get right. You need to get healing. You need to get counseling so that your emotions will be in accordance to the fruits of the spirit, not the fruits of the flesh. Many people are hurt. Many people are, are living a lot of negative things in them. So if, every time they hear things, the news, when they go through their mind and their heart, and because there's so much of negativity and hurt and inferiority complex, whatever goes through comes out negative, gets distorted. So it's important for us to get healed. I pray that you'll be prosperous and good up even as your soul. So that is where we need to deal with first. Then we guard our minds so that everything that's obedience to God comes in. Then you see the word becomes so powerful because then it'll be like a seed that falls on good ground that will multiply 34, 64, 100. So I want to encourage you. Get help. If you need counseling, you need prayers, contact your leaders the pastors, the people you know and ask them so that they can help you. They can counsel you. They can advise you. They can pray for you. So you have that inner healing. So when the word comes in, the promises come in, the things come in, you won't distort it, always have a negative slant of it and everything you look on the negative side instead of the positive side. You need to guard your thoughts so that all the thoughts will be obedience in accordance to God, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. So then you see the word of God will multiply within you. 34, 64, 100, 4, you'll see blessings. Amen. I want to pray that you look through this sermon again. You listen to this sermon carefully and apply these five important points in your life so that you will be like the children of Israel. You will go and claim your territory. Whatever it is that God has for you, you're going to claim it. Because this is a prophetic word for you to arise and go over. Arise and take what is yours. Arise and lay hands on the sick. Arise and preach the word. Arise and do great things in your business and your life. Arise. God is speaking to you. God bless you. Shalom.